Okay, so we're back here in uh, Rabbi Tantz's Sefer on Mechira, and we're describing this conflict that on one hand we see very clearly that a person has Bechir, they have free will, and your free will is not just locked up only for yourself, apparently you could have an impact on other people's lives, for better or for worse. At the same time, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is never going to let something happen to you, seemingly that it should not happen to you. And therefore, if somebody takes free will into their own hands, as we said before, and will put you perhaps into a situation of danger or the like, so then at that point Hashem takes over and He then examines you and your deeds and your merits and your spiritual level, and He then decides the position that you have now been thrust into because of this person over here, are you worthy of being saved and His mercy is going to come upon you, I mean the mercy of God, or are you going to get stuck in the line of the, God forbid, the bullet or the crash or losing the job or whatever it is that's going to take place, are, are you worthy of being saved or not being saved? So we seem to be going back and forth that if a person ends up getting hurt somewhere in their life, so then I can't blame um, the person who hurt me, and I really can't blame Hashem either, because it's my fault. That's how we said it. That if I would have been more worthy under the situation, under the circumstances, so then HaKadosh Baruch can do anything, but He doesn't make miracles out of thin air for no reason. He only rescues and He saves and He has mercy if I actually deserve the merits of, if I deserve that salvation based on the, my merits that I have. So that's how we left off last time. And we said, although it's a very high level of, of existence, that when a person sees something that's going on, going awry in their life, they're supposed to say, had I been a better person, I would have merited divine protection. So if I don't have it, then I must be, I'm not, I'm not, as, I'm not as great a person as I thought I was. Otherwise, it would, have, it would have come along differently. Now, yes, we have a lot of things in the world that we have to describe and we have to talk about. We're not yet ready to get, we're not yet ready to get there. We, have to, we really have to do our, do our due diligence over here to, to see all the different ways that it's expressed so that we can then finally get to the bigger theological questions of disaster and destruction and holocaust and inquisitions and pogroms and the like so that we can try to answer those questions. Okay? Um, now, he quotes over here the Sefer HaChinuch and the Sefer HaChinuch is talking about two mitzvahs, two mitzvahs. Number one is Shalal Lincoln, you can't take revenge. And number two, Shalalinto, you're not allowed to bear a grudge against somebody else. The Torah says, if someone does something wrong to you, you cannot take revenge against them. Why not? I mean, this guy wronged me. He deserves me to take revenge against him. And if someone does something bad to me, I'm not, I'm not allowed to hold a grudge. If I take revenge or I hold a grudge against another person, I'm transgressing a I'm transgressing a negative commandment in the Torah. So what is the, what is the reason behind that? So it's very much what we're speaking about over here. And that is like this. And he says, uh, okay, whatever the case is, whatever. Somebody did something terrible to you, and you are now, you're very upset with him. And we find many people in the world, if somebody did wrong to me, they're going to get it. And I'll do whatever I can to get back at this person. Whatever I need to do, that's the way that it works in the world. So, Hashem said, you can't do that. You're not allowed to go and take revenge. You can't be like maybe other people in the world do such things. How far reaching is this idea of taking revenge? All my life, let's say you said to somebody, Can you do me a favor? I, my car is not working today. Can I borrow your car? I, I, need to, I need to go to the doctor. Can I borrow your car? And the guy says, No, can't borrow my car. I'm sorry. No, I don't let anybody borrow my car. And so then the next day the guy says, you know what, can I borrow your car? 
I have to, my car's in the shop, I have to get to the doctor. I said, sorry, sir. Just like you didn't loan me your car yesterday, I'm not going to loan you my car today. You know how to do that? That's called taking revenge against another person, another Jew. How can you do such a thing? You're not allowed to do that. Now, says the, says the Sefer HaChinuch, Mishar She'a Mitzvah, the root, meaning the, the deeper meaning of this mitzvah is, Shiyeda Adam V'yitin Ali, a person must know these things to be true. Anything that happens to you in this world, whether it's good or it's bad, it only happened because Hashem brought it to your life. Now this is going to sound like something very opposite than what we've been saying all this time. We said people have free will. This guy wants to be a, a nudnik and he doesn't want to give me his card. What, that's Hashem's fault? That's his fault he decided not to give me his card. Says the Sefer Chinuch, anything that's happening in your life is because it came about through Hashem. Umiyada Adam, miyad ish, achiv, lo yedaver, bilti rats, and Hashem baruchu. Nothing can happen through a human being's hands unless HaKadosh Baruch has decreed that it should take place. Al Cain, therefore, kishitzarehu, yachivehu, Adam. Therefore, if a person is mitzayu, he causes you anguish. He causes you pain, emotional, spiritual, physical, financial, whatever it is. Yada b'nafsha, you have to know. Kavanoisav garmu, it's your sins that have caused this to come upon you. Vashem yizbarach gazer labakach, and Hashem decreed upon you that this should take place. It's his fault. This guy's driving you crazy. It's his fault. Says the Sefer Chinuch, it's your fault. If you would need some kind of reminder that Hashem is running the world, if you would need to go through a little bit of suffering and pain so that you could cleanse yourself from the sins that you might have done, this would not have happened. You would have been living a nice, carefree life. Everything would have been great. And therefore, everything that's happening in your life is a direct result of how Hashem deals with you and He gives you accordingly. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. Because what happened? <clears throat> the program they kill all those people. Good. I, I, again, like I said, we're, I, I, we're not ready to answer that question yet. Oh, okay. okay. We we yeah. have a, we have a lot that we have to learn first before we can deal with things like the Holocaust and the like. Yes. Right, so, <laughs> somebody comes to you with a business plan, and they're it's a deceptive plan, but you don't know it. They make it look like a great plan. You invest in it, and then the thing you know the guy sold you money. So you're not supposed to get an attorney and, and sue this guy? You're supposed that, to that, just that, say it's that, my fault? It does, that, no, that's, that doesn't, that's not taking revenge. That's, that's protecting yourself. But, well, you, but, you, can, but you can't go and then do the same thing to him. Revenge is when I do right. something that's going to get him back in, in a similar way or getting him back for what he did. If I now, this guy is a shyster and he... And he took hundreds of thousands of my dollars and I'm, I'm now suffering as a result, of course, go to, the, go, to the, go to the best and go to the court and take care of it. Now he says, Do not have in your thoughts to take revenge from this person. He is not the cause of the bad that has happened to you. Your sins have caused that this man was allowed to do something bad to you. Like King David says, So over there it's a whole case in, 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 with David HaMelech, but basically he, he said the reason, I think Shimi, uh, Shimi Ben Gera over here ended up getting in trouble, was not because when it looked like that other people were, were, were hurting him, rather, Hashem is the one that's doing this. I'm sorry, he was, he, he, he um, hung everything over here on the sin of, who's he speaking to over here? He's speaking to um, Avishai. He's speaking to Avishai and he's saying, it's not him, it's because of Chato, because of his sins, not because of Shimon ben Gera himself. And 
And therefore, there's, there's a good reason why a person tried to wipe out any machlekes, any fighting and arguments he has going on inside of his heart with other people. Be a shalom be an there should be peace between people. Yase Hashem shalom lahem. Why? Because somebody did something wrong to you, somebody hurt you, somebody did something. What, what is it? What is it? The Akadosh Baruch is the one that's guiding everything. Shem's the one that's running the world, and therefore we should remove it. Now that's all the that's all the mitzvah of that you're not allowed to take you're not allowed to be um, take revenge upon somebody. The next mitzvah, which is Shalom Lintu, you cannot bear a grudge. Um, what does it mean not to bear a grudge? An echen koich an etira. Calling you mitzvah zuchem mitzvah nekima kadem mitzvah. He says anyway. Everything that I said in the previous mitzvah is the same thing over here. I can't bear a grudge because if this guy did something to me wrong, so it's only because Hashem has decreed that based on where I'm holding, this person was allowed to get away with what he got away with. So you bear a grudge. It's, he did really something when you, you want to borrow your car and he says, hell no, I, uh, you can give me my car. But then you do give him your car and you do it with animosity and regret and hate. That's bearing the grudge. Yeah, hold on just one second over here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Right. The bearing the grudge is when he says, um, he says, He said, do me a favor. Let me borrow your car. And the guy says, no. So he says like this, you know what? You want to borrow my car? I'm not like you. You rotten guy, you wouldn't let me borrow your car yesterday? I'll give you my car. I'm not like you. Meaning, that shows, that's a putting down of the, even though you end up giving him the car to let him borrow it, but you got to rub it into this guy's face and tell him, I'm not like you. I'm not this, this low-life fellow like yourself who wouldn't help me out yesterday. I'll, I'll do it for you. So that's called, I'm, I'm, I, the fact that I said those words. Now, if I didn't bear a grudge, I would just say, oh, you need to borrow my car? Sure, here's the keys. Go ahead. And don't worry about the gas. I'm going to fill it up with gas later anyway. Don't worry. Yeah, but, then would, nobody would need to be punished because it's God's fault. What did you do to me? I'm nobody. No, no, no. It's not God's fault. It's my fault. If something, if something in my life is not going right, it's my fault. Because if I, was, if I had more merits on my own, I would be worthy of having better things happening. But you said, if somebody does something to you, he didn't. God set it up to happen. Yeah, meaning, meaning that when somebody comes and does something to you, it can only be coming through the hands of God, not through this person alone, which is similar to what we've been saying before. That if a person has free will, they can do what they want to do. But if it works, and I get damaged as a result of what they did, it never would have happened unless HaKadosh Baruch Hu examined me and saw that yeah. I'm, I'm at fault. So basically, Hashem runs the world. Yes. So there's no free will. Well, that's the problem over here. Because we've been saying up and down, there is free will. But the free will that you have is all dictated by, he's made, Hashem is making you have those Okay, well, that, no, Hashem's setting up, he's setting up the, 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 he's setting up the case, he's setting up the situation. <clears throat> what you decide to do in that situation, that's up to you, that's your free will. He's not putting, telling you in your brain, go and kill this person. You're deciding under the circumstances, or I'm upset with this person, I'm not going to let him borrow my car right now. Hashem, that, that's, that's your choice. Okay, so you're trying to, so in other words, you should be grateful for the good, and you should be grateful for the bad. Oh, that's a nice way to look at it. Now, we're going to have to see, because this is not the only place that the Sefer Chinuch speaks about this, there's going to be another mitzvah in the Torah that's going to take us back to the beginning of Makkah to understand, in the world of Edim Zomamin, of the false witnesses, where the Sefer Chinuch is going to describe things in a different way, which is going to suggest, according to him, that really one man's free will could seemingly act in and of itself. Let's stay tuned until next time.